Uh, so I want to analyze this video here by revealing truth, um, a short biblical overview of the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. All right, so I'm, I'm going to show, if this guy lies about one thing, you can't believe nothing he says. Um, so I want to show you as easy as possible that this guy is not revealing the truth at all. All right, but let's try to be fair about this and listen to what he has to say. Okay. The millennium is the rule of the Messiah. It says in verses 4 to 6 that they live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. This is the biggest piece of the Old Testament. Uh, 28% of the Old Testament is prophetic and a vast amount of the 28% are these passages. Look look what it says. The millennium covers 40 chapters of the Old Testament. The millennium, there are promises to David, three chapters about the millennium. Second Sam, remember his, his son, the son of David, would sit on the throne of David and rule. Uh, and that's in Second Samuel 7, Second Samuel 23, Psalm 89 is all about it. Then it's predicted in the Psalms and Prophets. 31 chapters are about the millennium. Psalm 2, he will rule with all right, so I, I'm just going to real quickly, I'm going to let him keep talking, but I just want to show here, like right here, the promise to Mary. And this is one you've seen me um, talk about uh, constantly. So he points out to Luke chapter 1, verse 32, and what's the... The millennial, the millennium, he's saying that the millennium is in Luke chapter 1, verse 32. That's what, exactly what it says. He's saying this idea that Jesus rules for a thousand years is in Luke chapter 1, verse 32. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. All right, so this is clearly talking about Jesus. Nobody's going to make any mistake about that. However, where this guy's BS falls apart is in verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end folks Jesus doesn't reign a thousand years the Bible never even suggest hints at any possible way that Jesus reigns a thousand years it's crystal clear he reigns forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end come on rule with a rod of iron remember all that that you've read psalm 45 psalm 110 isaiah 2 talks about the the transformation so does 4 and 11 and 12 and 30 35 is a huge millennial chapter and it's long, it's 60 verses. Um, chapter 61, chapter 66, I mean, let's just go to Isaiah. Not, e not even, if I proved one verse doesn't talk about it, then you can forget about the rest of them. I, I could go over all of these verses, all these examples. Not a single one is in reference to this idea that Jesus reigns a thousand years. Not one. Isaiah 66. This, you talk about a verse that's fascinating. Remember Isaiah? If I was teaching Isaiah, I would tell you that Isaiah is a miniature Bible. How many chapters are in Isaiah? How many books are in the Bible? How many books are in the Old Testament? And the first 39 chapters of Isaiah are just like the Old Testament. And look, in chapter 40, we find John the Baptist, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Isaiah is like a miniature Bible, but wait a minute. 
Who put the chapter divisions in? Bishop Langton in the 1200s. So you have to be very careful about all the people that do these interesting studies. Yeah, listen to the fool. That say because uh, all these verses have verse 66 and verse 6 and verse 16 and all this, and they make all these codes up from the Bible, and you can immediately be skeptical because the verse numbers were not put in the Bible till the 16th century by Robert Stephanus, a printer in Geneva. And the chapter divisions were not put in the Bible until the 1200s by Bishop Stephen Langton, who, who divided the huge Bible up into chapters, into 1189 chapters, so that the people... He was the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Church of England, the Anglican Church oh, of England. That's and he a did big it so deal. they could read the Bible through in a year. And he, he gave them these little divisions so they wouldn't get... You know, that's how we got read three chapters or however many chapters to read through, thanks to Langton. All right, so I'm going to stop it right there. All right, so... Uh, that, to me, is just... Utterly ridiculous. All right, is there even a nice way to put this? It's uh, got to be a combination of complete ignorance and uh, extreme hatred for the Word of God. There's really no way to put it. There's no other way to put it. I mean, you. I guess you could say... Um, it's just ignorance. I, I'll go with that. Let's just say he's a stupid. Who who divided the huge Bible up into chapters. Uh, who, who did that? And the chapter divisions were not put in the Bible until the 1200s by... The chapter divisions were not put in the Bible in 12, until uh, 1200s. And the chapter divisions were not put in the Bible until the 1200s by Bishop Stephen Langton. No idea who that is. It doesn't matter. And I'm telling you, if you got a Bible, and you believe that Bible that you hold in your hands is from God, you've got all the information that you need to be an expert on the Bible. You don't need anything more. These guys can puff up one another. It doesn't make them greater than you. Alright, so you think of all these chapter divisions. That, who's in charge of it? Well, let's go back to the words. Who's in charge of the word? It's God. Who's in charge of the books? It's God. Who's in charge of the chapters? It's God. Who's in charge of the verses? It's God. God is in control of the whole thing, of the whole Bible. It's the book of the Lord, and God put everything there. Everything. Everything in the Bible, including books, chapters, verses, words, it's all from God. If I can prove one thing, if I can prove this guy's wrong on one thing then you have to discount discredit everything that he says Acts 13 verse 33 God has fulfilled the same unto us their children in that he has raised up Jesus again as it is also written in the second psalm Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And of course we can go to second Psalm and we can see Oh, you know what I forgot about the second Psalm is a great great chapter. And we go to verse 7. You know, one of these days I ought to go over this chapter. Uh, but anyway, verse 7. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, 
Thou art my Son, this day have I begotten thee. So this guy's claim that chapters were not put in the Bible until the 12th century or the 1200s, whatever. That's wrong. I mean, in order to go along with that, you have to believe Acts 13 was not written until the 1200s. Or before, you know, or after, after the 1200s. I mean, there's just no way to reconcile that. No way at all. I mean, you could feed off the ignorant people, take advantage of them, and sell your BS. You can fool a lot of people, but you're not fooling God. And you're not fooling me. I can see the wizards behind closed curtains. And they're not fooling me.